What's going on guys? It's Donnie G Buckets here. We about to be uh reacting to the best 50 players in the current NBA right now. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna disagree with a few things on here, but for the most part, this guy knows what he's talking about, so for the most part, I feel like it's gonna be pretty accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, the man this is by B Soul. Shout out to him. He is back. It feels good to say that. And today we are back with another video. Two videos ago, I did my top 50 all time Hello. list. And with this break we have, I think it's a good time to reflect on what the NBA landscape is looking right now. Up, today we're going to be going over my top 50 players in the NBA as of mm. mid April 2020. If y'all didn't watch my all time top 50, the players I will list off will be in order hey, according to my opinion. But they I will also be, be simultaneously incorporating tiers, which is generally represented a clump of players that I believe for the most part emphasis on the most part are interchangeable again the tears are still my opinion but it should ease some of those so and so is over so and so yeah, it's, it's an opinion. comments like already I, I don't agree with the way you order them personally but I see where you're coming from also this list is considering everyone healthy but also considering how they'll play after their injury so for example Kevin Durant will be evaluated based on how I think his injury will affect his production once he's fully healthy the same with Clay Thompson the same with Kyrie Irving etc etc all right, now that we got the rules and right, regulations out of the way, one last thing. Let me know what y'all think. It's mm, Friday. Uber is nasty. Hint, it's not an album this time. And also leave a like for more content like this. It helps out a lot. Only takes five seconds of your time. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now for the honorable mentions, I do want to do some honorable mentions for this video because there are a lot of talented players in the yeah. NBA that missed the cut. Shout out to Jamal Murray, Tobias Harris, <sighs> Marcus Smart, Fred Van Fleet, Dennis Schroeder, Hassan oh, Whiteside, Bogdan it? Bogdanovich, Norman wow. Powell, Eric Bledsoe, Buddy Heald, Derek Rose, Brooke Lopez, John Collins, and Draymond Green. Especially Buddy Heald Draymond Green, and Bojan out on there. That really raised the ceiling of a great team. But if he's Wait, hold on. on. Green, Rose, Brooke and Lopez, Jamal Murray, John what? Collins, and Draymond great team but if he's on a bad team his talents aren't oh, already, already disagree <laughs> i believe once Stephen clay do come back next year i believe he's going to be much more effective and he will remind people why just a couple years ago he was viewed as an arguably top 20 player in the league i already know this dude's about to he better put bradley bill like so low bradley bill so also underrated to blake griffin john wall and victor oladipo players who can easily change my oh, wall like he's been crying they bounce back from their injuries but now that we got the honorable mentions out the way let's go ahead and start listing out the actual top 50 starting with montrez harrell at 50 tj warren at 49 deandre eight he thinks a warren better than jamal murray he thinks Montrez Harrell, DJ Warren, better than Jamal Murray. All right. In that 48, Nikola Vucevic at 47, Jaron Jackson Jr. at 46, De'Aaron Fox at 45, John Morant at 44, Shai Gilgis Alexander at 43, Lamarcus Aldridge at 42, and De'Aaron Fox needs to, Hayward at De'Aaron Fox needs to uh, so switch with Gordon Hayward. First 10, which also means we are starting De'Aaron Fox is the best player on this low. Uh, at least in the top 50. There might be a couple more of the tier. honorable mentions that actually belong in this tier. A couple of things to highlight in this part of the list. One, John Morant over Jaron Jackson. Yeah, he's better than Jaron Jackson. That Jaron Jackson is better than I think Jaw, he is. Which again, I honestly see that viewpoint and I myself was contemplating it. So I put them in the same tier. But me personally, I think Ja Morant is the driving force of that team, which is why I have him ahead of Jaron Jackson. Right. Also, is, is that Gordon Hayward? Switch him with the Aaron Fox, but Gordon Hayward at 45. Hayward? Look, I must say, Gordon Hayward has definitely proved me wrong this year in terms of his production. And shout out to him for that because this season he's having a sneaky good season, averaging 17 points, 4 assists, 6 rebounds on 50, 39, 85 splits. But aside from that, not much else to go over in this part of the list. You need great marketing videos Big boy to add. your business. With Hold promo, on. you can create commercial level video. I think De'Aaron Fox is the best player Let's in that tier right there. Move on to the top 40, Been going crazy. Starting with Zach Levine at 40. That is, that is low. That is, is low. that is low for Levine. That is low. That is low. Zion Williamson at 37. DeMar DeRozan at 36. CJ McCollum at If we going based off this year, based off this year, Zach Levine is better than everybody on this list. Except for Trey Young. Trey Young at 31. Now, this... I totally disagree with this list. I totally disagree. Devin Booker is a top... 25 player. Trey Young's a top 25 player. Zach Levine should be at 31. 
he should be in front of everybody on this list except for Trey Young and Devin Booker. Um, yeah. He got CJ McCollum in front of Zach Levine. He got Jalen Brown in front of Zach Levine. <laughs> Come this is where on, it starts bro. getting controversial. Zach Levine at 40. Exactly. Guy what? 26, 4, and 5 on good shooting splits. Zach yeah. Levine is the 40th best player in the league. Aren't going to be the best dunker in the league Zach and he can Trey shoot. Young at 32. Is this dude Zach trolling. Devin he got to be trolling. At 31, 30 points and 9 assists a game. Trey Young at 32. 26, 7, and 4 on great efficiency. Devin Booker at 31. B, B Souls, how could you? Man, you're, you're just doing this for views. This, this guy's trash. Why, why am I even watching this? Look, I swear I'm not just trying to have a hot take. I, I swear to God. I spent a decent amount of time on this list and making sure I was as consistent as possible. This man got d -Lo. I genuinely think that the NBA is just this talented. Or I Zach Levine. An era where you can make an argument that a player who averaged 29 and 9 is at best. At best. That's to the most delusional Trey Young fans. At best. 13. And with the names I have above him, I believe a lot of them are just as good offensive players. Young is at least top 25. To the game, he that probably is 25. A better player on the defensive end or being a better playmaker. In the future, he's going to be a top 10 player, though. Just a clarification, Easy. what I just said right now is not just for Trey Young. It applies for this group of players like Devin Booker, Zach Levine, and Trey Young. Because I do understand that there are not many better playmakers than him. A couple of the players above him also don't fall in that specific category of being a better offensive player and contributing more to the game. But I am giving them the benefit of the doubt you'd be dropping dimes getting buckets to to a look at that which i believe is easier said than done but with that being said let's go ahead and move on to the top 30 they got the book at 31 30, that's crazy Chris middleton 29 bradley yes bradley bill bradley bill no cap I ain't about to say this for views. I'm saying this because I, I personally believe this. Bradley Bill is a top 20 NBA player. Easily. Probably like number 18 or something like that. Let me see the play. Wait, let me see the players in front of him first. But he, you have 30 points. You don't make the all-star game, bro. I've been an advocate for Bradley Bill this whole year. He is the most underrated player in the NBA. Bill, 28 Chris Tops Porzingis, 27 Bam Adebayo. 26 Brandon Ingram, 25 Kemba Walker, 24 Donovan Mitchell, 23 Kyle Lowry, 22 Rudy Gobert, and 21 Carl Anthony Town. <laughs> he got Bradley Bill behind Kristaps Porzingis, Kyle Lowry, and Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is a great player. I'll admit, he's a great player. If you take Rudy Gobert out of the paint and bring him to the three-point line, say if Porzingis, he's guarding Porzingis, he would get torched, bro. He is basically, bro, when when Rudy Gobert is not able to block your shot on defense and he's like near the perimeter, he's probably one of the worst defenders in the league. That's just honest. That's being honest. And he sets screens and gets dunked, gets rebounds. He does everything a big man's supposed to do. But he's not better than Bradley Beal. Come on, man. Again, more controversial placements that I was honestly surprised as well because of where I thought they'd rank prior to making this list. But again, to highlight some of the problems, some of the I don't think Porzingis is better than Bradley Beal this year either. Number one, Bradley Beal at 29. A guy averaging 31 points, 6 and 5 on good shooting splits is being placed at 29. 31 points a game, bro. Second in the league in scoring. Place Devin Booker, Trey Young, and Zach Levine where they are. Because I do think that their stats are inflated due to A, the pace of the league, B, the system they're in, C, their role in said system indeed their effectiveness on the defensive end no pun intended has been kind of overlooked for these players i really did try to give them the benefit what do you mean their stats are inflated if anybody in the nba could score 31 points a game don't you think they would they can't but he can <laughs> Like, it's not over. He's the only one on his team. What is he supposed to do? Pass it? Dude, of course he's going to shoot it. And he's shooting good shooting percentages. Porzingis over Trey Young perfectly applies to Bradley Beal as well. The placement of players like Kemba Walker, Kyle Lowry, and Dean Mitch over those players. Kyle Lowry's not better than These crazy numbers are attributed to that contributor on a winning team reasoning. I mentioned. I don't think Kyle Lowry's better than Kemba or Donovan Mitchell either. 
because he seems like a player that should also be in the lower 20s based on everything I've just said. That should probably be top 15. I, I completely understand why you say that. He is a player who is not that good defensively, who is putting up monstrous offensive numbers, who isn't winning. Just like Devin Booker, Zach Levine, Trey Young, and Bradley Beal. But the way I look at it, a 6 foot 11 center averaging 27 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists on 51 41 80 splits shooting eight threes a game is much different from a guard averaging 25 plus points per game in today's league There's no i agree can do but i think he's top 15 guard or scoring wing then you can to a six foot 11 center that talented those numbers and the skill set are Cat's so dirty. ridiculous that me putting him at 40 percent from the three-point line on eight threes a game another ad oh my god on to the top 20 I need to see who's in this top 20 because I definitely think Bradley Bill's top 20 top 20 player. A freshman, I didn't take a chance at, at, at 20. Starting with Ben Simmons at 20, Pascal Siakam at 19, Ben Simmons better than Bradley Bill at 18, okay. Chris Paul at 17, Joel Embiid at 16, Jason Tatum at 15, Paul George at 14. Low key next year. Lay might not be the second best shooting guard anymore. That's all I'm saying. Jimmy Butler at 13, Russell Westbrook at 12, and Kyrie Irving at 11. So again, let's go over some of the problems you guys might have with this part of the list. Number one, the Embiid and Ben Simmons placement. More specifically, the thing the thing that I'm upset about is that he thinks that Kyrie is not better than Damian Lillard. <laughs> that's 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 that's, that's, that's crazy. And also in a different tier. Now I'm gonna be honest in my revisions. I don't think Paul George is better than any of the dudes on his tier either right now because he hasn't been playing draft, great this year. Also right next to each other. So if you're watching this video, I put Paul George at maybe 18 or something like, or 19. That they are much closer than even what my own list makes it seem. However, the reason I changed it to the way I did is because if I move and be closer to 20, that would mean that I'd be saying Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, and Siakam are better, which I just don't agree with. But then if you move Ben Simmons closer to 16 where Embiid is right now, that would mean that I'm saying that those three players are not better than Ben Simmons, which again, I don't agree with. So it was more so of a consistency decision than it was some statement about Embiid being much better than Ben Simmons. Despite what my list actually says, I do believe that they are around the same tier and are closer than what my list makes it seem. Also, let's talk about Klay Thompson and Kyrie because they are two of the three players I mentioned in the beginning of this video when it pertains to injuries affecting their ranking. And with what I said earlier, why are they so high on this list? Well, for one, while Klay's injury was definitely a serious one, I honestly don't expect that much of a drop off from him yeah. even after his injury. I still believe he'll be the elite shooter we've always known him as. He'll still be a great wing defender. Maybe not as good as he was before, but as long as those two things don't take a drastic fall off, I don't think his effectiveness will change that much from before his injury. Kyrie, on the other hand, in my opinion, has proven throughout his career. Oh my god, that was hold on, I gotta see that again. Kyrie on the Look at his hesitation. In my opinion, has proven throughout <laughs> his career that he can bounce back from numerous amounts of injuries. But that hesitation has to make you want to throw up. And as far as leadership and stuff like that goes, I've already made mm. a separate video on best handles of all time. It's just blown way out of That's facts. So that didn't really affect my rankings. Push comes to shove, Kyrie Irving is gonna be a 25 point per game caliber player on great efficiency, be one of the best shot creators and closers in the league. And will be in a position best non-ducking finisher been saying he will thrive in right as a second option so in i love those sense, great net jerseys the benefit of the doubt however i will say for the first time ever i am fully open to anyone who believes westbrook is better than kyrie he's not from one <laughs> he's not ability standpoint and two his improvement this year in maybe because he's healthier that's the only way i can think of that gap as well and while yes i know that in a way it is a knock on him that he needs the greatest spacing in history just to average 48 percent from the field but the truth is this is going to be the player we'll be watching for the next two to three years a guy who's going to be capable of putting up 26 to 28 points per game around seven to eight rebounds and assists and shoot 46 to 48 percent from the field if every argument for him is just countered with but he's he's in this system though because yes his numbers are affected by his system but systems do create players and play styles and that's just the nature you're not even shooting 50 percent he has the best spacing in the world doing as a second option to a team that was going to win 51 to 53 games goes against a lot of the criticism against him the past two years so once again shout out to russell westbrook for that y'all probably never thought you'd hear me praise russell westbrook but here i am the last thing i want to talk about in this part of the list is jason tatum's place the top 10 bro some might make the claim that i'm jumping the guns he got he got, he got damian lillard over Kyrie irving like that's not that's a no-go for the entirety of the season jason tatum
Tatum has I don't believe that to be true. Oh my goodness. Seven rebounds and hey, Donovan Mitchell. Great shooting oh, splits while being a great defender. That's a the books. best shot creators in the league and leading the Celtics to a 55 win season. I just don't see how that Go production blue. isn't up there with the likes of Jimmy Butler, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. But I think that's enough about the 20. Yeah, let's see the top 10. I want to see the top 10. Let's I mean, top 10. My top 10. Yeah. And coming in at number 10, we have Damian Lillard. Number nine, Nikola Jokic. Number eight, Luka Doncic. Number seven, Kevin Durant. Number six, Anthony Davis. Number five, James Harden. Number four, Stephen Curry. No. Number three, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Number two, LeBron James. Why is it number one? one Ka- the, the thing I got messed up, bro, the top five, is that's not how the top five is. The top five, in no order, is LeBron, Giannis, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis and probably either Curry or uh or uh Kawhi Leonard. Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, either, yeah, probably Kawhi Leonard or uh Curry. Kawhi Leonard is not the best player in the NBA. That's just a fact. Anthony Davis is definitely in the top five, and and Kevin Durant's gonna be in the top five next year too. Right. He's gonna prove it to y'all. And now, yes, Nikola Jokic is the best. Nikola Jokic is the best center in the league. That is facts. <laughs> That is facts. Dame being a tier above Russ and Kyrie, yeah, I, I think he deserves it. Dame just came off a season where he led the Blazers to the Western Conference Finals, and this season has undoubtedly been the best point guard in the league. Well, I, I, unless you consider LeBron and Harden, and maybe I think Russ is better. Okay, l- let's go with the majority of people believing that he's the best point guard in the league this season, as he's been averaging 29 points on great efficiency and 8 assists on a really good assist to turnover ratio. Now granted the Blazers have struggled and I can see why you might believe that it's hypocritical of me to put him there especially after my rant about Bradley Beal. Exactly. You talking about how his, on because Yeah, he was talking about how Bre- Devin Booker, Trey Young and Bradley Beal are so low because their teams aren't as good. But Brad- Damian Lillard's team's not good either. Seems like he does fit in that category. That was hypocritical. I I challenge you to make a list and put Damian Lillard at 20. It, it just wouldn't make any sense. Also, I wouldn't put him at 20, Damian but I put him lower than Kyrie. He's already proven that he can be a leader. Switch Kyrie and Dame. A leader of a team that can make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals and has been doing this for three plus years now. That's the difference. Next up, I want to talk about the biggest elephant in the room when it comes to my top 10 because up That's to this in point, the league. it seems like I've been optimistic about all the injured players. Despite their injuries, I still have Kyrie at 11. I still have Klay Thompson at 18. And even in my top 10, I still have Stephen Curry at 4. But again, Kyrie Irving has proven to bounce back from a lot of injuries, and he's still yet to have a major career-shifting injury. Knock on wood, I really hope nothing happens. His problem is a lot of small injuries adding up, but once again, he hasn't really shown that those small injuries can affect his play dramatically once he heals from them. Klay Thompson, again, I don't think he'll be affected much by his injury yeah. because of not like he was a super players. athletic player Stephen anyway. Curry had a hand injury on his off hand, and while yes, I know that's still important, I do have full confidence that he'll be fully healthy after a given amount of time, and he didn't have an injury that would affect how he moves on the court Cash. in terms of his legs. But Kevin Durant, on the other hand, tore his Achilles. In history, only Dominique Wilkins has fully come back from that injury like nothing happened. He came back from a torn Achilles and was still dropping 28 to 29 points a game, which is insane. And while yes, Kevin Durant did suffer an injury in 2015 that sidelined him for a while, and he came back in 2016 and pushed a 73 win Warriors team to 7 games, while that injury was a serious one, this one is a torn Achilles. Just take some time to research how serious this injury is and how many players have come back from it successfully. I put Kevin Durant at seven on the assumption that- I guess that makes sense, but still Anthony Davis is a top five player. He's scorer. better than, we'll I think he's better than rebounds, James Harden. Like Effectiveness wise, uh, James Harden, he scored most of his points on free throws. Because of how the injury would affect his movement. That's still a great player, don't get me wrong. And I will say that if he does fully recover- I don't know why I like Kevin Durant's form so much. It's like weird, but I like it though. But until I actually see that happen, as far as I'm concerned, seven is the highest I can put him right now. Now, Curry being tier one is me just giving him a pass for the 2020 season and just assuming that he'll be what he was in the 2019 season. Next season, LeBron over Giannis. While it sounds like it would be a hypocritical statement, after I made a video on how Giannis should be the unanimous MVP, I don't believe that's a hypocritical statement because I've said numerous times, actually I just said in my last video, that the MVP race does not indicate yeah. who's a better player. Exactly. But I will say depending on how the playoffs play. That's, that's facts bro, LeBron could have won MVP from like 2008 up to 2014. Out 
if they play out, that could totally Every change year. my top three. And last but not least, to explain Kawhi at one, I just believe that his postseason run last year proved that he was the best player in the league. No, it didn't. After the no, it didn't. When KD, when KD came back from his injury, he made Kawhi Leonard look like a regular defender. KD was busting his no butt cheeks. No anything to say when people claim that Kawhi was the best player. And since then, Kawhi has maintained that production. The Clippers are still going to win 56 to 57 games, which is not the 65 that the Lakers were on pace to do, but it's still nothing to be ashamed of. And I just don't believe that LeBron leading the Lakers to a top seed in the regular season after all the additions they made in the offseason changes that. And when it comes to Giannis, the I hate those jerseys. Giannis Things are ugly. Last season is essentially Both teams. the same this year with the margin being bigger because of the Bucks having more wins and Giannis being a better shooter. But again, the playoffs showed a different result. And while I was really anticipating the playoffs to settle that dispute at the top three for me, until that happens, this is my order. But once again, I do believe that they are in the same tier. And after everything I said, you can, you can really put those three in any order and I would see where you're coming from. However, Harkening back on the tiers, like I said in the beginning of the video, the tiers are there to put everyone in clumps and for it to be interchangeable within those clumps for the most part. And this is where that most part kicks in because I must say, it's really a stretch to have an argument for Curry being above any of those three right now. I'm gonna give y'all some time to take a screenshot of the image on the screen right now. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know in the comments if y'all want me to react to the top 50 players in the NBA of all time because he did a video on that too. Um, I can react to that and I think flight made a video on it too so I can react to flights reaction that would be pretty funny um, But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe and until the next video I'm out